Welcome back. So this morning I got a head start on the spring marathon without you. You'll have to forgive me for that. Um, I managed to get my way up to 300th place. I seem to be now down to 392nd. Uh, you see I had a win and 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 a win. And then a loss and a draw and a loss and a win. And I'm like, you know, now's probably a good time to call it, get some rest and freshen up a little bit. Now with 10 hours to go, let's get back in the heat of things. Ready. Oh, I am ready. All right, we got a French here. Ah, yeah, pain pills are not going to help your performance. You need to try the good pills to... No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I hope things improve. All right, so... Now you're 900th place. Uh, well, give it time. Give it patience. Not everybody can be in first place. And really, I think that's a fault of the tournament. You, There should be a tournament where everybody is allowed to be in first, as long as everybody plays well. Everybody's a winner. That's how tournaments should go. But apparently that's not the Western way. All right, so this pawn cuts the knight out, so it's not going anywhere. So now we just have to swing the rook over to the D-file. Um, just try to make this position uncomfortable for the opponent. I could probably take here. Um, I'm still warming up a bit, so you have to forgive me if I'm a bit slow. Um, on noticing some of these things. Uh, he's trying to prepare e5, but I've got one, two pieces. He's got one, two, three. All right, so I can't stop e5. Um, not unless I move something. Uh, well, I could move my bishop to f4. That would stop e5. I think. Again, I'm kind of waking up here, so I might be missing a tactic or two, but... All right, here we go. Tactic time. Pawn takes is forced because of queen takes. Black loses an exchange. All right, now we're in it. We've got two and a half minutes left. All's going well. No, I'm not saying that everybody... Well, I don't know. Maybe you have different definitions of wins for each player, but... I still think there should be some kinds of awards um, for people just based on their level of chess mastery. It doesn't really have to do with did they beat everyone. Just kind of a barbaric concept. Um, but... Whatever. Um, I guess the ultimate manifestation of that would be some kind of achievement system. I guess like what they do with martial arts, where, I mean, yeah, periodically there are contests and such, but um, there are various levels that you can attain. Yeah, right, you have categories or levels or however you want to subdivide things, but allow people to get something. Um, Don't have everybody fighting for the same thing. Check. Uh, where's the fun in that? Oh, okay. Here goes my king. He's just gonna check me again. And he's gonna take my pawn. And then my rooks are gonna take the. Oh, never mind. He's not doing that. Hmm. I don't like this. But okay, we'll do it this way. It's slow. It's, oh my goodness, king f3 loses material. King f3 was the plan. King f3 doesn't lose material. I'm still waking up here. 
Um, fine. I could have done king f3 because my rook would have protected stuff. Um, I'm just being blind here. Alright, but if he takes my pawn, his knight might be trapped, maybe. At the bare minimum, it's inconvenient for his knight to get out. And I can get back my pawn. Um, I don't think f3 would have worked, because he could have... Well, I can't calculate right now, so... Anything I'm trying to explain isn't going to make sense. Let me have my water. Water is a good thing. Are we going to see rook d8? Are we going to see rook f8? I mean, I'm clearly winning this. Um, I say, but I have to show, I have to demonstrate the win. Just being ahead isn't enough. Uh, okay, so... Yeah, my pawns stand strongest when they're right next to each other. I expect king g7, and then I could just run back, because I don't have anything better. Doubling the rooks there is not going to make them stronger. Um, but the weak point in this position is the d8 square. So just line up there, and his rook doesn't have anywhere to go, and he's going to see that and run away and prevent that, but um, we tried is the key point. Um, so now we're going to orchestrate some kind of breakthrough and or exchange on the queen side. Um, let's see how that goes. I don't expect it to get very far. Oh, incidentally, another... Th no, I can't double my rooks and then play rook to the h file to exchange. It just doesn't work out. Um... Okay, so chess is full of give and take. And he's getting my g-pawn, but he's giving his c-pawn. Um, all of this does distract from me pushing b4, but I don't need to push b4 in this circumstance. Uh, you can just start taking pawns. Yeah. Um, if rook h2, I just block it. And the key point here is after rook h1, um, I guess, yeah, I am forced to exchange a rook for a knight and a pawn, but this endgame is still better. I've obviously blown the endgame, but I'm still doing much better here. Um, uh, I was doing considerably better than this earlier. But this position's still quite strong, and I can, um, uh, I have some really good chances to convert this, because uh, I've connected past pawns. One thing I don't have is an outside pawn, uh, which would help further. Um, alright, so... I've got to keep all my pawns if I can. I'm pretty sure I can't. Alright, let's see if we can lure him in with king f4. I've once tricked a 2,000 rated player into that tactic, so um, it's not unreasonable to expect that some players might fall for it. Check. Uh, Hmm. Doesn't even flinch. Those are some nerves. But he does flinch at this, so we'll take the rook and the game. Like I said, barbaric. Um, Victory. I, I still think he deserves some partial credit for playing quite well that game, but that's not how chess goes, unfortunately. He played quite well. 
It's just he's not going to get the number one trophy for that kind of play. Alright. I am ready. Ah, he is going to move. Okay. This is a sideline, knight b3. It's playable. Um, but yeah, part of the reason I picked the Sicilian here, well, one, I want to learn it better. And two, I think it's a good choice for this kind of situation against a similarly rated player. Um, now, if I remember right, black is trying to break with d5 here. d5 is the big moment. He's going to castle. Or I guess he's going to do that. Um, I don't think that that's the book move here, so there must be something interesting going on. Um, oh, I've done this before. It's not very much fun for white. Um, unless my opponent can find a way to make it fun, but I don't think he's going to find anything. I was considering queen d7, queen a4, but... Then I realized, oh wait, he's still got a bishop to try to make this challenging for me. Um, but yeah, you don't want to castle this way if you don't have these things already moving. Um, it's just too complicated. And while you might, with great um, energy, uh, you might be able to find a way to make that work, um, it's just not worth the effort. So I think, wait, no, queen c2 is not happening. Um, queen c3 maybe? I'm not sure. It seems like no matter what he plays, I have some kind of break I can, oh, I don't have queen a2. Queen a2 might be a mistake here. Um, knight d5 is worth considering, but doesn't work. Um, well... It looks like it doesn't work. Um, that's different than not working. Knight d5, oh, no, knight d5, cd5, rook c1. Yeah, no, he doesn't get out of that, does he? Knight d5, cd5, rook takes knight. Um... He moves his queen. No. No, this is just crushing. Very nice. Found it with two minutes to spare. Uh, wait. No, I guess he's got b3 here. I didn't look at that. It does somewhat complicate this matter. Um, because, well, he didn't see it. So, I'll take full credit for this one. Uh, so yeah, the question is which piece does he want to take with uh, before he gets checkmated? If king takes, queen a1 is mate, otherwise queen a2 is mate. Um, because he's got three options here and it matters what I move, I can't just pre-move queen a2. Victory. Uh, all right. Not that I even need to pre-move there, but we'll take it. So yeah, we're working our way up into the top 300. And that means the games are going to get more challenging. Ready. Alright, here we go. Oh, B6. A bold, bold play. Oh, okay, so that pawn wasn't uh, in a position where he could take it, you know. That was a fun little tactic I put up a spur of the moment, but um, uh, it was sound. Um, it was just tricky. So if he plays knight f6, I just play h3 to stop knight g4. Um, but no, I think I'm quite happy with having a half-open f-file, too. 
Okay. Let the games begin. Um, check. check. So he's going to block with the pawn. They all block with the pawn. But this blunts his bishop, so... Um, yeah, so he got a pawn. I'm not worried. This is blitz. Anything goes. So, yeah, now we double back and start threatening sacks in this direction. Um, well, I could do... no, knight takes, queen takes would happen, so I can't do knight takes. But if he plays knight bd7, then I can sack. Um, otherwise... Man, this is so close to being crushing on the king side. You have no idea. So close. Um, Rook takes knight. Pawn takes queen g4. I want to lift a rook. All my rook lifts are too slow, so we'll put pressure on the C file. Um, yeah. Oh, he's intending knight C6, perhaps. That was the real intent behind um, that pawn move. Although, yeah, now he's defending his king side and allows me to do this instead. Uh, king takes might be worth considering. Um, <laughs> I'm not saying it's playable, but it's worth considering. Um, so... Right, e6 is attacked twice. Uh, his knight's pinned. Um, yeah, I'm down a knight, but I don't care. Alright. Not exactly a free bishop. No, again, this knight is pinned. So I fork yeah. his knight and his queen. Now I'm forking. Oh, wait. His king's forced to go to e7 or e8. Um... So this isn't just me winning an exchange, or this is me winning a rook. I'll take it. That was accidental. I thought I was just getting an exchange. Um, my mistake. Alright, so now that I'm up material, let's trade. Obviously, he's going to try this idea and try to mate me there. Uh, it's like the most predictable thing ever. Because it's... Victory. Oh, never mind. Okay, he realizes that the jig is up. And that that's not a position worth black trying to win it. Because um, I'm not hanging anything. Well, it looks like Lance has got probably a draw in his hands. Um... Man, Ready. winning those king and pawn endgames is hard when there's an increment. Still, I wonder, how did Lance get a position that wasn't completely winning? That seems uncharacteristic. Okay, so the book move here is d5. Bishop b5 is um, the standard response. Because after this, we've transposed into the max lang with f takes rook g8. Um, and I've won a tournament game in this line. I think I've actually won two tournament games in this line, and white just doesn't have the activity to make up for um, his odd piece positioning. So now this is hanging. Um, so we just attack. And white's underdeveloped. 
So. This hits the G pawn. Um, I don't even have to take that right away. It's probably best that I don't. It's probably best that I just um, develop and castle. But I'm not seeing a way to do that. So, well, no, this develops. MC was in third. That's pretty awesome. It's also cool that Llama's back into it. Um, so I guess there's some hope for me, is what you're saying. That I might be able to take, like, a hundredth place if those uh, fellows are able to take third and eleventh. There's some hope for me. Um, okay, let's plug up the C file. And just start attacking. So the threat here is bishop d5 going for mate. Um, pretty sti- well, okay, the mate doesn't work. Um, so if bishop d5, this bishop ruins everything. Um, another possibility is rook takes g2, and then this discovery wins the queen. Um, obviously he sees the discovery and elects not to give up his queen, but uh, it's the thought that counts. Alright, so I guess I'll go back. That was a fun little adventure. Oh, that was lots of hours ago at, like, the beginning of the tournament? Huh. Okay. Um. Check. This is how we exchange queens. Oh, shoot. I'm... Well, okay, my opponent's not calculating, but rook takes bishop was really good. Um, instead, yeah. we get this, which works out pretty well for me. His only move is rook takes bishop, so I could do rook takes rook as a pre-move. And this is actually mate in three. Um, Victory. That's a sad game. Otherwise, I'd bookmark it. Hey, look, we're on our way. We're in the top 300. 24 hours is a bit much, although it's the only way to ensure that everybody around the globe has a fair chance. Um, Ready. Otherwise, whatever hours are selected are going to benefit some players. Okay, we've got... We've got whatever this transposes into. Um, oops, I should probably play d6 before bishop g7. That's my mistake. Um, okay, super late Benko. <laughs> I don't know the Benko. If I knew the Benko, well, I, I kind of know it, but I have a lot to learn about it. Um, such as, what's the move order? I think an idea is to try to hit this. But yeah, this is really sad for a Benko. Um, okay, so we're going to hit that. He's going to play e4, and we cry. Um, I don't know. I'll just develop. <clears throat> but yeah, I have strayed from theory, so woe is me. Um, Alright, so... 
complicated things a little bit with this knight move. Um, if I could just hit that in a way that doesn't lose all my things, um, things would be good. This looks like a fun square for the bishop. Um, I expect queen f3. Because that seems like, other than king g1, how that seems like the only way to defend this. Um, I'm trying to provoke some kind of weakness here. Okay, I guess we could just hang the pawn too. That works for me. What? Where is he located? Latvia. Okay, so I mean, it's Victory. probably a decent time of day for him, but he must just be exhausted. So you know the thing that I tend to do with these marathons is just show up for the last hour. Um, but today I got kind of a head start on that plan. Um, so we'll see just how far we can get. Oh, a Sicilian. Sicilian's definitely an opening. Knight f6? Nice. We get the one line that I kind of sort of know. Knight takes knight as book. Oh my god, does he not know this? How can you get this far in this opening and not know it? Well, I guess a lot of the moves are natural. Um, queen a4 is the book move here, right? And if bishop d7... Oh, I don't have knight d6 here. Um, yeah, no, I have to just retreat. Um, How does it go from here? I don't remember. That's not good. I'm so tempted to play b4. But then he plays a5, and that's no fun. Um, I think I just fianchetto now. I know f5 and g5 and all that are... Oh, okay. I guess he's not doing g5. This is pretty tame. Alright, this provokes h5. Man, this is really tame for a Sicilian. Like, I'm expecting fireworks everywhere, and... No, we just have some gradual... I don't know what it's going to be. Uh, I do expect a5, though. I'm making my life difficult. Uh, okay. Let's go over here, I think. And this supports d5, so if I choose to play c5 later, I'm uh, in the clear. I do want to line up my pieces with my opponent's uh, queen, but it seems impractical. So I play this to guard h3, so there's no exchange. We're going to make this difficult, um, but hopefully it's okay. This bishop is very uncomfortable um, for us. So if he plays f5, maybe I play f4. This has always been running through my mind here. Um, also got knight a4 to b6 ideas, which are pretty typical of Sicilian. Um, okay. Uh, it seems like I should just get on with my plan. Wait, no. Wait, no, I can't go to e6. Yes, I can. This is okay, because if he plays f5, I go to g5, and threatening knight e6, 
And if he takes me on e6 with this bishop somehow, if this pawn is already moved, I can take back and then play my bishop to d5. And this is all well and good. It's like if he plays f4 here, I've got knight e6. Um, and if he plays bishop takes, I've got pawn takes. And if he plays queen takes, he walks right into a really elementary tactic. Um, which he won't do. I mean, he might do it, but he shouldn't. Um, but also, this position is just decent for white. Um, once I plant my bishop on his side of the board, things get things improve. Um, all right, so he's attacking me pretty fiercely. Uh, it's only fair for me to return the favor and hit this, which does hang the e pawn, um, but that's okay. I think if he takes h4, I take h5, he takes g3, I take g3, he takes g3, king takes g3. I think I'm still hanging in there. Not like that, but I've got a space edge, and uh, I've got the bishop pair, and my king is safe. I don't see any imminent danger there. Also, if he doesn't take, I can just... There's other things I can do to make his life difficult. Um, so do I take b7 or do I take h5? b7 actually looks good to take. Like if I do h5, I don't seem to get very far. Um, yeah, let's take this. What's complicating this is queen g5. Um, because after f takes, now I control this square. So I've got the f file covered, I've got the second, the seventh rank covered. Like everything's all covered, so I can just get away with this kind of move. And my king is safe. So I've nothing to fear here but fear itself um, Check. and after h4 I just go back and again what am I afraid of my position is just better and he doesn't have a check Beyond that, he doesn't really have an obvious plan. Um, so I could take... Yeah, I could take a8 here. Again, he has no check, so this just wins an exchange. I was considering e7 there for a second, and that just gets complicated. Um, um, Sadly, I don't have e7 here. Um, let's take this. Check. And then go back. And then say, isn't a nice day for white? Um, okay, so we could exchange queens, but that's no fun. Let's do this. Victory. Okay. Knight f6 there might have been okay, but um, I think I'm kicking his butt there. Exchanging queens would have won pretty easily, but it would have taken a long time. Ready. So instead I played a tricky move and got away with it. Right, king's gambit. King's bishop's gambit. Check. This is complicated stuff, guys. Um... In case that wasn't clear. Alright, so... How does this go again? Probably a good thing to know. If I take his queen, he takes my queen, I take his pawn. What if I change up the move order? Right. 
So he's attacking my queen. I develop. And we go back, and we still have this under fire. Um, so it's true I won't be castling, but I'm not concerned about that. This defends the rook. Um, didn't see that check. Check. So yeah, we've castled by hand, and materials even, and I have a decent position. F7's under fire, so that makes pawn takes pawn kind of undesirable. Um, I don't want to take F4 right away uh, for numerous reasons. Uh, most of them having to do with my king dying, like, to the most fatal attack ever. Uh, so, just finish our development in peace. Okay, that's interesting. I will develop with knight h4 somehow. It might be tricky to get this knight h4 move in. Um, but we'll find a way. Well, this is not typical. Uh, I'm going to play knight g5 instead of knight h4. And to play knight g5, we have to play h for first. So that's development. Um, and I guess I've lost my d-pawn. That's okay. Oh shoot, I should have taken this. What was I thinking? I was thinking I was going to activate my pieces, I suppose, and that I have, but oh, this is not what I would wanted. Um, Rook d4 is the threat. Um, Rook d4 is easily met. Oh, but now... Now my bishop's pinned, so e5 does hang. <laughs> Figure this one out. Oh my goodness. Um, knight e5 might be playable. It's really complicated. I think the simplest reply is just king g3. Um, so let's unpin the bishop. Okay, now he's going to go after my king. So let's defend my king. Then try to go after his king. Okay, so I need something to protect my center. Um, this could fall apart pretty easily if I'm not careful. Uh, 
<sighs> so. Oh, right. Okay, well, I guess he can have that. Um, I don't know if I'm okay with letting him have that or not, actually. So, I'll try to protect things this way. Um, and try to attack this way. Check. Check. What a mess. Ay ay ay. So we'll defend it this way. Check. Check. Ah, oh, that's Check. no good now, is it? Check. This is no good. And by no, I mean it's just undesirable. It's actually okay, but you just don't want to be on the receiving end of this. Oops, actually, no, this is just lost. Check. Check. Okay, well, how am I going to attempt to hold this? Probably with great pain. Check. 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 Uh, I'm getting mated. Check. Well done. Check. You lose. All right, he got me. Well, we tried. We tried. Oh, thanks. Um, not sure what happened that game. Unfortunately, the fact that we're playing this marathon means we don't have time to analyze between games. If you were to go to an over-the-board event, a uh, real tournament, they would give you time between games uh, for analysis. Ready. Um, unless you're the last person to finish in a round. Usually that's... oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's cool. Uh, let's do this. I see he's attempting to make this challenging. Um, he's doing a good job at that. So I hung c7. I wasn't paying attention. We were conversing, and um, there are things more important to me than whether or not I'm giving up a pawn. Um, so that will become important soon, so let's take care of that. Uh, 
Okay. Let's try to nab that. Um, this is curious. There's so many red flags going on in this position, it's crazy. I think h5, though, deals with everything. Because I have knight h5, and I'm hitting c3 and hitting a2. Um, what's he doing? Is this chess? Hi, That's amazing to me that somebody would have the galls to... Or the gall to play such a ridiculous move. Um, okay. So, oh, I don't have... Um, I don't have bishop c3 anymore. That's kind of a problem. Still, this is good for black. Like, white has nothing going here. Which is a bold statement, yeah, yeah. considering I'm on the receiving end of what looks like an attack. But just isn't. Um, knight g3 is next. So I'll step up here. Threat is bishop takes a2. Uh, the response is probably a3, which starts to open up white's queen side. But there's not another way for white to address this, because otherwise b2 hangs with mate. Um... I guess what might be scaring him is after a3 of queen c4, and then like what follows there might be b3, and then I've got queen c5, and whatever. Obviously we're not going that way. I'm just saying if like we were playing a real chess game, um, white might be concerned about some of these things. Um... So we'll go back. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Oh, that was a fun game. You lose. Uh, I don't know the Sicilian very well. Ready. Alright, so we get an opponent. Uh, let's play the two knights. Can we see a sack here? Yeah. Let's play some of this double-edged yeah. stuff. Well, if that didn't get sharp, I don't know what did. Um, get some interesting games. Even if, like, I'm not even nearly within earshot of the top 100. Yeah. can maybe get into the top 200. So, this is the old, 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 old main line. Um, I don't remember how this goes, so we're going to make it up. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not b5, but I have no idea what the right move is. So, um, so gg is the conclusion. Um, Queen d5 is the threat. There's really no good way to counter it. Knight b5 is also possible. Um, I guess king d7 is the only move that attempts to hang in there um, against queen f7 or against queen d5. Try to put some distance between my king and that queen. Um, 
I am up in exchange. Unless he takes my rook. So, there's that. Alright, so now I'm down material. Um, oh, but I can take the bishop. That was what I was thinking. See, I'm still up. Well, not in exchange, but now I'm just up a piece for a pawn. Check. So all I have to do is just finish development and declare victory. Um, so, yeah, that was pretty exciting. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe you think otherwise. I don't know. Alright, so I could take that off the Um I could also just take it. Uh, <laughs> just taking it seems quite good. Let's get queen f5 though if I do that. So, let's not allow that. Oh, you see, okay. So we got some people who think this is still exciting. All right. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could get ra mated randomly. You never know. It looks quite good for black. I'm perhaps overselling this, but I kind of like this for black. Check. Check. You know, being up two pieces and all. Uh, can I not get mated? Check. I just have to go here, right? It'd be so much nicer if I actually had an attack going. Uh, I'll take one of those. Victory. All right. Victory has been realized. Well, plus, it's cool to say that, oh, well, that was exciting, and just like, oh, yeah, no, I had that under control the whole time, you know? You have to play it up a little bit. So we got a Karo on the loose, which we transpose into kind of Bavinic of a Queen's Gambit. Uh, Bishop can no longer pin, so we play Knight F3. Uh, so we got a move ordering advantage. Um, I'm not sure why people play this particular variation. In fact, I had a game in the Lee Chess Ladder that went pretty much exactly like this. And my opponent castled, and um, I played bishop c2 and made it in short order. Um, this opponent's not going to let me do that. But that knight's misplaced, so I perhaps messed up my move order or something. I don't know. Um, oh, Zug's in this too. Oh, nice. Or no, Zug would be playing like Darkest Dungeon or something. Man, I should have had that open. That's more fun to me. But I haven't done this in a while, so it's good for me to do this. Zug's in the tourney. Wow. So you're saying there's a chance we might get paired. Um, and you know, if he plays a Vienna, I just might play the Frankenstein Dracula. Like, I do every freaking time I do against him. Anytime we get paired... That's for a simul. That's always what we play. And it gets highly theoretical and actually drags on for hours because that's just the nature of that opening. But this is a blitz game. Um, man. Uh, if we got paired, I'm not sure if I'd be, be up for that. Just doing the Frankenstein Dracula. But what else would I do? I'm sure it would freak him out. Like, it's the previous Simuls, he's refused to go into the line against me. Um, because he thinks I know it better than he does. And no, he's the expert. He knows that line. 
yeah, I used Stockfish to find a line or two after a game, but um, we found a way to justify um, all that stuff, um, which I thought was quite cool. All right, can I sack here? Can I sack here? It's legal. Yeah. I don't know if it works. It It's almost guaranteed to fail, but it looks cool, so we're doing it. All right, and then uh, I want to play knight e4. Um, just bring one extra piece toward this. Yeah, there's a good chance, especially because I'm sitting at, I don't know how many points in the tournament. I can't see that from the leaderboard. Yeah, it's cool to see who the leaders are, but it'd be also cool if you could see a page that showed just, like, where you are, the two people above you, the two people below you. And over here you could see, like, the top five or top ten or something. That'd be cool. But I get a sense that if we get paired... Uh, probably I'm getting the white pieces, um, just because the alternative would be too hilarious. Fate will conspire against us, and it shall not be. Oh, wait a second. Am I almost winning this material? Yeah, it'd be cool to see where your friends are at. I'm sure there's no way that would perform well in terms of a database query. Um, what is he thinking about? I just played this on a whim after like 20 some seconds. I'm like, you know, this looks playable. I didn't calculate this out to mate. I just calculated this out to, hey, that looks fun. Um, but okay. <laughs> sure. Um... I don't know how you're expecting to survive this with the few seconds you have in your clock. Oh, D7's hanging is the whole point. I should have spent... Victory. Just, okay, whatever, I won. That's what matters. Um, I should go back and bookmark that. Although it's too ridiculous, really. D6... Okay, we got the four pawns attack. We delay knight f3 as long as possible. Um, let's see. I uh, see he's not castling queenside. So we play this way. Um, how's this go? This feels wrong already. Like, if I do d5, he's got knight takes. That's annoying. d5, knight takes. I, oh, then I can't interject pawn takes after knight takes. Because the pawn's not there anymore. But I could do this first. This gets a bishop pair. Um, oh, but now there's no trap. Pawn take. No, there is. Trap's still. No, it doesn't work. Um, yeah. Pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes, whatever. I'm trying to be tricky, but there is no trick here, because I just have too many pieces protecting that. If bishop takes, maybe pawn takes. Alright, so... Stuff is loose. Stuff is ever so loose. Um, I'm getting the bishop pair, but losing my d-pawn. Which might be a fair trade here. Uh, queen takes? Bishop takes? Which one? I'm not losing my d-pawn if I do queen takes. No, I am. Never mind. I'm bad at math. At counting, specifically. Which is a really small subset of math. Um, 
if I pin this, it doesn't really get me anything, because one thing you can just do is um, protect that way. Uh, not that he even has to do that. But no, we did things the interesting way. Um, so now I have fun moves like Rook G3. Yeah, also I'd still have Nightbot making that announcement that um, journalism is pretty important these days. Don't forget to um, uh, sponsor your local journalists. Or not sponsor, but I'm looking for a different word. And not finding it. Patronize. Don't forget to uh, support your people who are out there searching for compelling ways to present um, truth. You don't have to go to a church to find truth. There are other places you can go that also inform you of what's going on. Um, Not that that a religious tone has anything to do with uh, journalism, it doesn't, but um, I'm just saying, uh, you know, support people who are doing good work. All right, let's get this bishop out of here. I might have been hanging this bishop earlier when I played it there. I'm not sure. Maybe it was hanging at one point. It's not hanging right now, so I don't need to worry about it, but... Um, so I've got this. Man, it is so comfortable. Um, not having to worry about... Oh, wait. I don't want my queen there. Let's get the queen off of dangerous stuff. The queen was defending it. Okay. Um, so if queen takes g7, right? Queen g7, rook g7, rook g7, oh, that loses a piece. Because again, I cannot count. All right, so he's got queen c5, I couldn't stop it. It's nothing to be afraid of, but, um, yeah, he's still got it. Here, let's lift all the back rank stuff. Oh, hang on, that might be hanging a pawn in a most interesting way. Um, well, okay, that's an adventurous move on my part. Um, okay. Ah, bishop g7 does not quite work. So close, and it looks so cool, but it's not there. Yeah, right, the pawn was taboo, but he could have played g6 against it, and then it's looking quite weak. Um... He's trying to force my queen off this diagonal. And I'm trying to deflect his rook so I can start my attack on g7. So, yeah, maybe bishop takes g6. That's where I was saying, like, this h4 move, instead of playing h3, h4 might have been useful because I don't have to sack the bishop to get this open. I could maybe play h5. But then you can start defending it, but the fact that I got h4 in uh, just puts me in a slightly better position to attack than h3. But there's such incredible risk that goes with it, too, because, well, anyway. Um, the move is played. It's risky. Um, Alright, I have to back up now. Which is okay. It's okay to admit when things don't go exactly as planned. Uh, he's gonna move the king. Nope, he's not moving that king. Okay. Wait, the pawn's taboo on account of a pretty simple tactic. 
Um, I freaked out there for a second, and I'm like, wait, this is actually okay. This is fine. There's nothing to worry about. Um, um, all right, we'll take one of those. Victory. Note, if rook takes, then bishop c4. Ready. Oh, rook takes f6 might have worked too. I don't know. What I played was good enough, I think. Certainly for the way he was playing and the time pressure he put himself in, he wasn't able to find a way out. I still need to learn the queen h4 lines, because those are the fun things. Um, I just don't feel this is the appropriate venue against an 1880 who isn't going to know the theory anyway. We're just going to get completely lost, and I'm not going to learn anything from winning, losing, or drawing. Um, but against like a 2000, I might have tried queen h5 and just got my butt kicked and said, okay, now I know the line for next time. Um, all right, so let's just support the bishop. All right, he's intending c3, so I have to do something about that. <sighs> so something indeed is done. Um, okay. Oh, I did not expect that. That's aggressive. Okay, we're going to play f5. Are we really going to put the pedal to... Oh, yeah, I guess we are. Okay, what are you going to do about this? Oh, just hang it. Okay, that works for me. Free pawn. You won't see me objecting to that. All right, so we protect d5 and e4. I could have just run with the knight, but um, developing a piece and going toward the king is better. Uh, in the sense that I might win quicker and get an opponent who is interested in playing chess. Um, some opponents like to play clock. Uh, some like to play chess. Some like to play both. Um, and when you're playing so fast that you hang things, I mean, then you're playing like I play. Alright, so wait, um, let's go back this way, everything's still covered, uh, I'm not attacking g2 this instant because if I were to keep trying to hit that he'd find all kinds of ways to hit my queen, but my queen is active on h6. Um, and where do I move this? This looks good. Good enough. We'll take it. That's a fork. And a discovered attack. Alright. Take one of those. Gum this up. Alright. Pin the queen. I mean, he could do queen h3, but he just chooses not to because that's too hard. Um, I guess I have to defend this. Oh, I don't have to. I'm being greedy. Um, that's my mistake. Well, it's good that this gives my king somewhere to run if he checks me, which he didn't. Um, okay, everything's covered. If f6, I just move the rook, and then king takes on g7. Alright, I walk into a fork, but thankfully I've got the square covered. Um...
There's so many ways to hang material here, which is why he's playing on. He's hoping I fall for something. And I'm hoping he falls for something to make this easier. Only because he's up 30 seconds or so. So, um, well, 20, to be fair. Victory. Ready. All right. Are we going to get a Berlin? Oh, that's not a Berlin. All right, so we get, um, what's this opening called again? I don't remember. This is e4, e5, d4, oh, Danish Gambit. See, now that he moves the knight, then we take on c3. And, sure, d5 here. Yeah, I think the Goring Gambit is you play knight f3 first, and then c... Th no, that's a Ponziani. Yeah, knight f3 first, and then d4 or something. Um, but whatever. I think this is a Danish Gambit. Oh, Danish is only if you take it to b2. Okay. Yeah, maybe this is the Goring Gambit then. Uh, I have to go back. I don't like the fact that my pawn structure gets messed up, but oh well, what can you do? Oh, Goring would need knight takes c3. Okay. Um. So I'm going to play knight c5 to protect my b-pawn. So I can lift my bishop. Pretty unusual stuff, but um, it looks effective. Because what's going to hit my knight? I mean, I guess his knight could attack mine. Um, if he does that, then I can consider maybe I just want to move my b-pawn. And maybe that's okay. Or maybe I play knight a6, and yeah, this actually looks better. So this gains a tempo. Then we hit this pawn. Um, did I say hit? I meant to say I'm hanging stuff. But very slowly hanging stuff. Alright, so we'll try b5. Oh! Jeez. Wow, that stings. Okay, well, tactics got too complicated for me there. You lose. Well, okay. I, I relaxed a little bit too much. Chess is not a relaxing game. Hmm. I don't go berserk because that's no fun. I know I just lost a game, and I probably could afford to do a ber going berserk here, but where's the fun in that? All right, so we get what's this called? I don't remember. I'm pretty sure Queen G4 is not the move here, but. Um, I don't know how to play this. I 
That stops bishop b5, which is my big idea there. Um, I guess I might be turning this into a pseudo gambit sort of thing. Okay, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I've got time to. No, if I play knight e2, that traps my stuff. Um, yeah, no, this is a gambit. Uh, not a particularly good one. Or at least not a popular one. Because now he plays h5 and apparently gets away with a pawn or something. I'm not sure. It's not comfortable for black. Uh, if he plays knight takes, I can just take the pawn back. And yeah, he... I don't know. I like this activity I've got. So I'm going to keep my queen on d4 if I can. Keeps the queen out of b6, keeps this bishop tied to there. If he plays there, I have the option to double some pawns of his. Um, I could play queen b6 myself, which doesn't do anything. All right, we get an end game, guys. Saddle in for the long haul. We're going to be here a while, which I'm sure is exactly what he wanted, because why else would you play a French? Oh, wait. We might not be here very long. Never mind. Um, that's convenient. Note if bishop b4, I've got knight takes b4. So, yeah, we get this line. And now we have opposite color bishops with um, some attacking potential here for sure. Um, okay, so he's going to have to play d4 and sack a pawn at some point, just as a practical matter. I don't want to exchange there, because I don't want to activate his rook on the e-file. I'm more okay with activating it on a different file, but not on the e-file. Um, interesting. Let's keep this complicated. Try to get some kind of endgame advantage here. This is greedy and could backfire if he gets a bishop on f1 um, at a moment when I'm not paying attention. But uh, in the meantime, I can keep grabbing small advantages. Okay, so he's sufficiently defended f6. So it's best for me to just plug the file now. Um, now he's going after my rook, so I have to do something more drastic. Um, I'm not sure I'm afraid of king f3. King f3 is interesting, but I don't think it works. Oh, yeah, d4 was interesting, too. Now, I saw that possibility. I thought he was going to sit there and calculate it, 
um, and spend some time doing that instead of like playing right into a variation without calculating it. Um, so this is game, I think. Check yeah, that's checkmate. But I didn't... Uh, I thought the d4 sack wasn't decisive. It looked interesting. Ready. I didn't have time to deeply analyze it. Um, Alright, so two Frenches in a row. This will not stand. We're gonna transpose into something else. Okay, we'll take there. See where we go. Wherever the wind may take us. Okay, A3. And I don't know. Let's drop back. Nope, Bishop F4 hangs a piece. I was just kidding about Bishop F4. Um, this looks fun. That also hangs a piece. My goodness, what am I doing? Alright, so let's just play that. Hope he falls for it. Okay. <sighs> yeah, okay. I'm not awake. In case people haven't noticed. Um, well, I should just play the French and not try to deviate like that. Ready. Ready. All right, we got Rhett again. Oh, ben um, Benko. Oh, wait. What is this again? I'm pretty sure this is a Benko. Uh, so I can get away with this move. If I remember right, this is the theory. And if that, then I play queen f6, I think. Bishop g5, queen g6. No, I'm confusing this the line where white's played knight c3. I shouldn't confuse my lines, um, because bad things happen. Like here the e-file's opening up and I'm just screwed. So that was a fun game. Um, uh, I should learn some theory. I really should. Alright, so e5's under control for this yeah. instant, but it's not going to go well. We all know how this is going to end. Um, so I have to play knight e5, I think, if I want to have any chance of castling this game. But knight e5 hangs uh, stuff too. But it's kind of forced. Fricky 5 maybe bishop d4 keeps things halfway interesting. Um, okay, we'll just defend this and not threaten anything. Definitely not threatening anything at all. There's no threat on the table whatsoever. Um, you think you'll see it? I think you'll see it. Well, at least he didn't bolt this out. You have to give him credit for that. Um, yeah, you're probably right that he missed knight g5 at some point. I didn't see it either. 
Like, even now, as I'm trying to go back through the game, I'm not seeing it. But my position is pretty pathetic. And by all means, I there must have been something somewhere. Um, so... Okay, now I get to castle. And we'll pin this knight. It's not going to do much good. Um... Well, I didn't think it was going to be this bad. Like, wow. That hurts. Um, okay, fine. I guess the good news here is that, like, if he plays g3 and picks up my knight, I get the rook, he gets my rook, I get his bishop, it's okay. Um... It's just, I've lost control over where this is going. Um, not that I ever had it. But I could pretend that I did. Okay, so I can go back here. Double on this, but also bishop f3 is the threat. Um, he's just made a huge, a couple of huge holes right next to his king. Um, I don't need to play my queen up there to take advantage. Um... All right, so I'm gonna let him win an exchange. He's gonna play bishop b5, and I'm gonna say I don't care. Because I have high hopes. Um, pineapple pie in the sky hopes. Uh, but he's not even letting me do that. Uh, why don't you let me show off my brilliancies? Okay. Well, this got messy, because he's threatening this. That's really hard to meet. Well, I guess I'm just going to hit the queen. Oh wait, this is defended by my queen. I could have done more aggressive things. But this is a decent square for the rook anyway. Ay, ay, ay. That's the brilliancy, guys. Hanging the rook with mate in Yay. one. While you threaten mate in three over here. Why am I playing? I guess I'm playing to see if I can get a pairing with Zug. I guess that's the goal. Ah. Talking and playing is tricky. You should try it sometime. The funny thing is, like, this whole time I know um, all my viewers have gone over to Zug's stream. Not because he was mentioned here or anything. He's quite good on his own. Um, but the fact that he's doing this at all at the same time that I'm doing it means that um, he's like the main act because he knows what he's doing and I don't. It's a different experience and people tend to enjoy watching people who know what they're doing. And he does. He, I mean, yes, he claims this epileptic spinach technique, but he calculates like a genius. It's, it's incredible. 
Yeah, for now I do, but he's really, I don't know. Uh, the most amusing thing, like watching him, is like when he does mess up and he misses something, I don't know. But he's seen so many other things that we've all missed. But he misses the one thing that we all saw in those rare cases where he does blow it. Um, uh, so that, that makes it entertaining to watch. Oh, I mean, uh, National Master John Chernoff. Uh, uh, I don't have a sack here. That's sad. Oh, man. Why no sack? Okay, we'll move the king over. Try to find a way to sack something. Thankfully, my opponent's not playing safe moves, so we have something of an adventure here. Whee! Okay, don't play like this at home. I play like this because I have an audience, not because it's good. Um, even if my audience were just my opponent, I would still play this. Okay. Can we see Bishop A6? Defending the... No. He's not interested in that. So we have to do things the boring way. Or we just grind this castle down one stone at a time. Until there's nothing left. Um, so we'll take the knight. And then take the pawn. Just take things, just keep taking while there's things to be taken. Alright. Nope, that doesn't defend everything. Not nearly. Oh, this is pretty bad. Um, like, my everything is hanging. I don't even have a square to go to. All right, so we're gonna sack an exchange and then lose the d-pawn and he's probably just gonna play rook a6 and rook a1, honestly. Check. Oh, well spotted. You lose. Well spotted. Just invert the move order. Oh, okay, that's the thing I missed. So I missed this bishop. Like, I'm not very good at chess in general. <laughs> so I don't see those combinations. Um, all right. And we've got a game. Wow, not knight c3. Well, this has gotten pretty esoteric. Knight c3 is basically automatic in this setup. Uh, okay. You got me thinking, buddy. If that was the goal, well done. Oh, did I walk into a queen trap? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure my queen is not trapped.
The sack might be fun. Probably not, because after taking twice, then I just have queen e5, and that whole skirmish has ended. Um, so threat is queen g5, or queen g4, and we get a boring endgame. You know, I could just offer a draw here, because I don't really care about this game anymore. <laughs> um, but okay, no draw. Take one of those, and I guess I'm disposing of my D-pawn. One way or another. He should just take here. He wins a pawn. He doesn't want it. Um, he doesn't need it, honestly. All right, can I stack an h3 here? No, does not at all work. Um, but honestly, nothing works here, so what's the point? So e5 is covered, so you can't just like try to liquidate and open lines and um, it is a little bit tricky for him to advance. Oh, now he wants to exchange. Sure. That sounds fun. I don't even have any sack to make this more interesting. I could do this. This is kind of fun. It's more silly than useful. I was going to do rook e5 next, and then I realized that loses my a pawn. Well, so I guess I'm playing that and doubling my pawns. And my knight still can't get into the game, so I have to play like knight g8 here. Or f5, and f5 just liquidates, and we have a rook endgame. And we all know that all rook endgames are drawn. So rook e7 is critical. Um, this might not be so critical. And the question is, can I make this even remotely interesting? Um, I think so. 
Every pawn that gets liquidated makes this slightly easier for me to hold. Uh, I guess I take that. Rook g5 is interesting. Um, This is what makes rook g5 interesting. Shenanigans that I can pull here. Check. Check. This is why you should have agreed to the draw earlier. Uh, cuz now he has to fight out this really long stupid end game. Check. Okay, I guess I helped him out a little bit. to try something. Check. I'm so far committed into this at this point that I'm not going to give up Check. on it. Check. Which Check. is a, a logical fallacy, but what can you do? Check. Yeah, it causes some wasted time, but this cursor really, 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 this particular mouse will release a piece basically halfway through any one of my moves. Ready. So a slight loss of time is, it's a worthy sacrifice because otherwise I'm just hanging pieces and immediately losing a game. So it's true that dragging pieces to move them is 
better with most mice, but this particular mouse, it's not worth the risk. Not when I have to move a piece any appreciable distance. Uh... Oh, did not expect that. Yeah, he does have the bishop pair. Um, it's true. Check. There goes the bishop pair. Um, if knight takes knight, I'm coming out okay on this exchange. I think his only moves queen g8 here, which walks right into a fork. Uh, queen g5 also walks into f4. Um, although, I guess f4, he gets my h knight, my h4 knight. Um, but he's. I don't know, this looks risky for black. This looks pretty risky somehow. What's he doing? Queen h3 is forced. It's the only move here. I mean, yes, I've complicated things, but that doesn't mean you should just sit there if you have only one move. Um... Oh my god. Rook G Rook D two is pretty messy. I was so fixated on this thing. I forgot about Rook D two. Like I saw Rook E two and then forgot that after Rook D two he has Rook D one. And then he's got Rook eight D two. Um uh, Thankfully I get away with it. Alright, at least this time I don't forget about rook d2, right? I almost forgot twice in the same game, which would have been unfortunate. It's still possible, but um, it's just bad to be making the same mistake twice in one game. Here he's got queen d5, and there's really nothing I can do to lessen or soften that blow. Um, because after bishop d4, I'm just getting mated. So I have to allow these exchanges and go into a lost endgame. Um, so to those people who said I should play this arena because I'm so close to getting a trophy, um, my response is pretty clear that, no, that doesn't seem to be the case. We're playing this for fun. Not because I have any 
real chance to win anything. I'd still need to play better, considerably better, to get a trophy. Trophies mean something. Which is why I'm saying yeah. that like participation trophies and such could be a fun idea. Um, If I can't crack uh, 150th place, I've been playing for like four hours, two before the stream and two on stream. Um, yeah. And if I can't crack 150th place yeah. after however many games I've played so far, cracking 100 has got to be 10 times harder. Uh, so, it was a fun run, but um, there's other fun games to play too. Um, well, this endgame is just a bit lost. At least the knight makes it somewhat tricky for him. Knights are tricky pieces. So he's going after my pawn. <sighs> Can I stir up enough activity to... No, I can't really... This might get a perpetual. It's a really long shot, but... Um... Oh, right, so he's got that. Uh, so I have to come back. Oh, thankfully that's a fork. Um, all right, so my king is one square further away from this pawn. Not too pleased about that. Um, all I can do is threaten to threaten something and hope that he just like falls apart, uh, which he might. But I've been trying to get my king to d5, that's my real goal here. I guess we'll take that. And then, hmm, I have to take this e pawn Check. to have any chance of shenanigans. Um, Check. This is not looking very good. Check. We have to get the highest quality shenanigans for this to work. And it appears that we're not doing so well on that. In some other forms, the king in three versus um, king and rook, uh, actually without the rook, that's where you could draw this. With the rook, there is no draw, obviously. Um, okay, we'll concede that. My opponent knows what he's doing. So, we got, what, five losses in a row? People have started to wake up. Um, I guess it's that time of day. Ready. I'm blundering more and more. Perhaps I should not be playing um, my typical openings. Also, what's with the French becoming so popular? We're going to play an exchange French. And actually get a game in. As opposed to a sequence of memorized moves. Um, so, game commence. Alright. 
Um, fine. Whatever. So many doubled pawns. I've got four pawn islands. You know, if I didn't have that D pawn, all of my pawns would be isolated. Stop knight f5. Knight f5 is still stopped. All right. That's surprising, but I guess he intends a c4, so I can't let that happen. Um, hmm, what do I do about the c3 pawn hanging? Probably just let it hang. It didn't matter whether I played queen e1 or queen e2 as far as I could see. Um, at least I didn't see any variations where it mattered which square I selected. Alright, we get an endgame. Just, just what a f player uh, aims for when they play a French defense. Okay, so I want to play c4, but I don't want to hem in my bishop. So I I put um, my bishop on b5 first, and then I push c4. Check. Uh, that's interesting. Oh, I suppose he's got knight d4 here. That makes things not as fun. So I was considering bishop d3. Um, it actually hangs in there, but it doesn't get me anywhere. c4 is the only way to make progress here, but the progress that's made is negated by the fact that I can't attack anything after this. That I just have a fortress and pretty much nothing to aim for. Um, Alright, so if he does knight takes, I can do a takes, which looks awkward, but it's fine. Because if he doubles his rooks on anything, I can double my rooks to meet it. Um, in particular, if he does that, now I'm just doing fantastic. Um, because not only are my rooks coordinating, um, that's bold. I'd not do that if I were black. Check. That's really bold. Um, I guess he gets a passed queenside pawn this way, but man, at what expense? What a Pyrrhic victory. Um, I guess I keep both works on. This is scary. My king Check. does get flushed out. I'm not. Check. I'm not too cowardly here. Check. Check. 
check. Oh, I could go up the board, can't I? Do I want to do that? Yes. This is where my haven is. My safe place is where my opponent's king used to reside. Check. 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 Perfectly safe. Nothing to worry about. Alright, so how do I attack here? So now we bring the king over uh, toward our pawn. Is this a drawn position? Well, I think that's pretty straightforward. There's no mysteries here. Um, let's see, do I have any tricks? G7 mates me, so I'm not going to play that. Uh, I've walked into a trap. That sucks. Check. 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 So now this is completely winning for black. Uh, you lose. So the question is, where did I mess that up? The answer is that I should have taken earlier and um, yeah, what I played here, I should have just played like, I don't know, where was it? I sensed around the point where I lost the thread here. I did sense that rook f5 was an interesting move here. Uh, I should have spent time analyzing it because I had the time to look at it. I was bored. Um, but yeah, rook f5 was the drawing move. No, g7 gets mated instantly. Um, well, I'm sorry. Yeah, notice the other shot here was g7. Um, Check. Yeah, I got fancy. I tried to win it. That's, so there's two mistakes. One, I had rook f5, which uh, was a cleaner draw. Two, I tried to win this because, you know, a draw and a loss are pretty much the same at this point in the tournament. Um, so I tried to play for a win and I got the third result. Um, but yeah, a loss and a draw count for pretty much the same thing at this point. Um, and pretty much at any point in the event. Like, they both will not only not um, start a streak, but they would stop a streak if he had one going. So, it's like 
you have to play the odds. And if the odds say that one way you might score not only points for this game, but for future games, and the odds say that um, the other way you only score one point for this game, you take those chances. Um, you throw uh, drawn positions to try to get a win, which is just something horrible that you shouldn't be doing, but the scoring system pretty much demands that you go for it. Um, Check. Check. Let's see. Isn't the move here d4? We're playing a Gioco Piano reversed. Uh, my opponent hasn't yet castled, but um, I get to play the black side of a Joko Piano because I played this wrong. But this black side of this position is pretty good too. It's easy equality and ability to press for more. Um, Yes, Isolated Pawn does give my opponent attacking chances, but I prefer uh, this side of the position. Which is ironic given that, well, no, I guess it's not ironic, because this is why I play 7 knight c3 in the Molar attack. Um, it's because I believe this is actually better for the side with it doesn't have the Isolated Pawn. But it's pretty equal. Um, yeah, we have to get out of tactics. I think this is playable here. We'll find out very soon if I'm mistaken. But I'm pretty sure I can do this. So I'm hitting the rook, hitting the pawn, maybe threatening the knight. But yeah, I think I'm just collecting the d-pawn. Um, so you could trade two pieces for a rook, but I don't see better for him. I guess he's got knight g3 threatened, but I think I'm doing well. I'm I've looked at lots of lines here. I'm still expect I'm playing this like it's three minute, and it's not. It's three two. Um, so I'm playing way too quickly. Um, but on the other hand, I am just interested in what happens here. And not to the point where I'm going to calculate it all out, but I want to see, like, if I play this move, what does my opponent play? A better way to play if you want to win a tournament is to calculate these lines before playing them instead of after. If winning is important to you, um, then calculate before you play. If it's not, then just have fun. So I've defended my rook. Oh, actually, I'm protecting f2 this way. Um, Well, I am out of impulse decisions. Um, no, I think I still have one more. I could play b4. There's so much to calculate and so little time to look at it. So 
to some degree, I have to trust my intuition. Um, even when I know it's going to lead me astray when I need it most. That sucks. Alright, so I'm losing a queen. Um, maybe getting something back. We'll see. He's got knight g3 here. He might not see it. He'll see it. He's 2083. Knight g3 gets two pieces for... Oh. Am I hanging something? Why do you do that? Um. Okay. Check. Well, we better attack vigorously before uh, he figures out what's going on. So. Um. So F7 is a target. I could play my pawn up to h5 if I'm lucky. Like I said, this mouse is unpredictable in terms of where it releases. <laughs> I tried to release it there and it wouldn't. Um, but no, h4, h5 is an idea. Um, oh, I saw that and I still didn't register with me that that was a possibility. Um, yikes. So, what now? I guess I just hope that I don't fork my king and rook. Um, which would be sad. I think I have enough squares covered that it's unlikely I'll walk into a fork, um, but it could still happen. Stranger things have occurred. Check. 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 Why am I playing? Uh, okay. Well, we got checked, guys. Better resign then, you know. Look, another fork. Check. And another fork. This is Fork City here. Um, I'm just flat out of ideas, so I play that. Okay, let's go back. Check. Okay, I guess I'm sacking for that. Uh, I don't have a way to hold this. Check. 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 If I do lose material, I would rather it be on the terms of my choosing. Because uh, at least there, there's some potential for a stalemate to occur. Check. 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 You lose. Okay. Yeah, so he understands what he's doing. Very well. 
How many losses is that? That's like seven or eight in a row. Man, where? What time of day is it for some people? Um, I'm guessing that the Eastern world, it's like I'm sorry, Europe. Europe, it's nighttime. So, um, so yeah, Europe is kicking my butt right now. Because they're the people who would be logging in and playing at this hour. Yeah, it's plus five or so from where I'm at. So, oh, well, no, it's afternoon there. Still, some people might be tuning in there, but yeah, I guess between Europe and Asia, uh, those people are playing and kicking my butt. Somewhere where it's like seven or eight. Yeah. When people, I think, I assume, I might be wrong, but but yeah, I think people where it's like nighttime uh, are logging in and playing. Oh, free pawn. When an 1800 hangs a pawn, I need to take it because that's my ticket. <laughs> Basically Russians. Yeah, yeah, the Russians, the Ruskies are kicking my butt. Um, here, set a little trap. Oh no, I hung a pawn, but I'm gonna get the B pawn. And, no, okay. It's not even gonna go for that. Um, I guess we'll go this way. Um, Okay, so I don't like hang mate. We'll do this. Wow, he played knight e4. I don't know, without looking at my move. There's a probably a term for that. Um, I want to say prophylaxis, but that doesn't really apply when it's a bad move. When it's in reaction to nothing, then prophylaxis doesn't necessarily apply. So knight c5 doesn't work, so he can't hit my pawn. Therefore, I can just play this. He probably plays knight d2 to stop um, c4 from happening. Or to slow its advance. Nope. Uh, he's just going to block on the c3 square directly. So we'll support the pawn. Oh, can I play c3 here? c3, no. c3 hangs too much. It's very unsound. Now if the knight can't take on c2, that's a different matter. c3 here, pawn takes bishop, c2, it's gg. Because the knight can't stop both the pawns. With the knight over here, though, knight takes is a winning shot. But in this position, there's nothing. I mean, there's knight c3, and then I just play d2 and laugh. Um, or there's rook c1, Check. which doesn't quite work as well. He wants Victory. me to play this out? Okay, he doesn't. Good. Ready. Oh, I am ready. I finally won a game. Hey, it's not a French. Oh, is this an Italian opening? All right, am I gonna get to play my gambit? Knight f6, yeah. Pawn takes, bishop b4. Knight e4. Bishop c3. Bishop f6. Knight e7. Oh, 
That's not knight e7. Well, we had something going there for a minute. Um, then we didn't. So, yeah. Did I mention that over the board, this is a really good opening? <laughs> like, over the board, expect to win with this because your opponent's not going to know it. Um, so I played this, so there's no bishop d4 check. And yeah, that's a piece. Oh, but c4 is hanging. But I have um, tactics there too. Interesting. Alright, can I calculate? Can I calculate? Before saying no, uh, let's take a look. Uh, um, so bishop d2 is one idea. It's the best developing move that I see. Okay. Interesting. Well, so consider that um, even if I screw this up, worst case, I've lost a pawn or two. But if he screws it up, that's just GG. Um, so I'm t more than willing to play those kinds of odds. Check. Check. Now, it can lead to some really unfortunate grinds where I'm in a bad endgame because I missed a move in the opening. Um, so sometimes you do get stuck with a pretty unfortunate endgame if you mess up really badly. Um, generally speaking, this is pretty playable. Uh, you're going to have to point this stuff out to me like I don't know if not after the game after the tournament um because this is I'm a bit focused on this position at the moment so I'm guessing c takes um oh no I hung my pawn Oh my god, he fell for it. Okay. <laughs> I guess uh, he freaked out. Uh, I'll take that. I will so take that. Check. Yeah, he didn't have to play h4 either. Um, Victory. What? Really? Okay. He believes in me. Well, that gives us some time for to analyze this. Yeah, I would have played that for at least five to ten more moves to just see... I mean, yes, I'm down two bishops for some number of pawns, but that's not easy. I guess what is easy is like if I do bishop takes b6, um, I don't know. That's not so easy either. But yeah, it's a long grind and black has like no winning chances. And maybe black gets a draw, but a draw and a loss are pretty much the same. Um, you were asking queen b3 in some position, probably here. 
Yeah, queen b3 is best according to Stockfish. Uh, oh, right, this is the move where I like play bishop d2. I thought it was clever for developing. I thought queen b3 didn't work, but Stockfish says it does work. Um, so there's that. Uh, I just didn't like having this exposed. This rook on e1. But there's no way my opponent can attack it, so what was I afraid of? I don't know. I was seeing things. I thought this rook was hanging to some kind of, like, queen d2, queen takes e1. Um, or some... I don't know. It's obviously not what was there. Uh... Yeah, queen b3 would have won much easier. So, I think once I crack 100 points here, um, I'll take a break and watch Zug play some games. Because I've been going for quite a while, and while I'm having some good success here, this is just exhausting. Ready. <laughs> Like, if I wanted to play a tournament, I would go play a tournament. Um, these games are pretty serious. <laughs> let's take let's take that. Let's try to lighten the mood a bit. Oh, is Zug, like, promoting to seven bishops or something? All right, so we'll pretend that we played a Slav. <laughs> and then he brought them all to their starting positions. Ah, uh, that's... Yeah, that's how you... There should be a trophy for that. Now he's sacking everything. Okay. Well, at least he's having fun. That's good. Uh... So I control all the important squares on the board. Um, so I guess I just declare victory at this point. I did not expect queen c3. Alright, YOLO! Who cares about this super ultra weak pawn? It's out of range. So, um... So YOLO strats are okay. Um, I guess that knight was controlling d5, so I can't let it stand there. Um, I'd offer a draw, but draws don't do any good to anybody in this event. Oh, knight and bishop made. I hope he knows that one. Because I happen to know some U.S. women's players who... Well, I guess that wasn't a knight and bishop, but... I'm just saying. Some professionals don't know um, the basics after they've been playing a super long and challenging game. You know, they should make that a qualification for a title. Demonstrate that you can checkmate with two bishops, or not not two bishops, but demonstrate you can, like, I guess the bishop and knight mate is the only one. 
Um, but just demonstrate that as part of your title qualification. You don't have to do it right every time, but just show it at least once that you understand just what an endgame is. All right, so we're breaking through over here. The point of the rook lift, of course, is to allow the other pieces access to the A file. Um, well, that got sharp. Um, by the way, this is why you don't want to play this sort of um, technique in general because things can backfire. Oh, this is cute. So if he takes my pawn, I win the... Well, I don't win the rook. It's sharp. This is not recommended. This is playing with fire. Okay. So I defend my pawn, everything is okay. Um, eh, why not? Let's defend stuff. By stuff I mean that pawn. Looks like my A pawn invasion has cleared this file, so I can bring in more, bring in reinforcements. Um, it's probably doing knight c3. Oh no, I actually get an interesting position now. Um, okay. Wait, he's got rook c1. You didn't, well, I guess we didn't go there, but uh, I could have taken his rook. Um, I wasn't paying enough attention. If this knight moves, oh, well, I like my position, though. Um, Because I control all these squares on his side of the board. But yeah, taking the exchange, I just missed it. I'm talking too much and playing too little. But also thinking about like how much fun Zug must be having um, doing all the various things he's doing. What? Okay. Well, we'll exchange. Um, I don't see how this favors white. So I protect my 7th, in case he was thinking of invading there. Man, what a grind. What a grind. Um... Free knight. Victory. Can't object to that. Whew! I crushed a 2160. 
Of course, I get pared down this round, so hopefully this will go better. Well, actually, he's not just rated lower, but he's also um, not the same standing in the tournament, so this might actually go well. Uh, let's just defeat that before it shows up. Alright, so how do I get an imbalance here? Let's take that. Offer an exchange. Man, isn't this exciting? Okay, finally we get some kind of imbalance that lasts. I could have tried to go after the bishop, but actually this knight looks pretty nice. Also I'm hitting this, which is what I was immediately thinking about. Um, didn't even realize that I'm winning it by force. But uh, yeah, so much the better. C is the option to exchange so that he gets access to f5. If he doesn't exchange, um, then no f5 for you. I mean, you can castle. Castling's not particularly good. I'm threatening d5. Man, this is so much easier than the previous game. Because, like, my knight opposes his knight, so it's very difficult for him to make any progress here. And now if he goes back, this knight will oppose an f3 knight. So I can just push e4 um, and kick him back if I wanted to. Um, but I think I have better. So... Let's keep this closed, because he might decide to play c4, which is kind of suicidal. Um, but also, I mean, I've got a pawn plus. I can use this to keep the files closed until I get my rooks developed. Uh, so we're going to attempt to develop the rooks. He's going to do everything he can to slow this development attempt down, and I'll do everything I can to accelerate it, and we'll see where we end up. Okay, so he's giving an exchange for a pawn. Or a bishop for a pawn. That works too. Um, let's go back. And then over here. And then if g4, we've got a nice outpost. Uh, this is not as nice of an outpost, but we'll take it. Develop this. Threat is to do that. Pile up on this. Um, well, got to do the obvious, unfortunately, which is a uh, fork. It does give up my g-pawn, but I'm not too attached to it. Oh, he's got rook ed1. Um, he didn't see it. So, yeah, this is fine. I'm just trying to activate my pieces, and he won't let me. <laughs> he won't give me a moment to rest. If I could just get all my pieces out of my back row, um, this would be glorious. 
and he just keeps complicating things. So I get a tempo here. This tempo allows me to play rook e6, that rook e6 um, finally allows me to unwind. As long as I don't get back rank mated. Um, All right, let's line up all the rooks. Well, likely he's going to think to, yeah, he thought to move his rook elsewhere, which makes good sense. So we'll exchange the rooks over here. So when do we get the handshake? When's that happening? I guess I have to keep playing accurate moves until he concedes. Not sure why I thought that would stop king d3. It really doesn't. It does stop king d4. Um, Check. Pick up another pawn. Check. Check. I'm not doing this just because it's cute. It's actually quite strong. Because I saw that. I saw that in advance when I played knight e5. If not for that, it would have been okay. But um, yeah, I've got rook g4 mate there, which simplifies things quite a bit. Well, I've probably misplayed this very badly, but uh, I survived. Uh, against a lesser opponent, I might not have come out as well. Or a greater opponent, I might have not have um, survived to the extent that I did here. But yeah, this is perfect. Um, let's just go back. He's hoping for knight g4. He's hoping I just lapse for a second and just allow that. Um, so I say no. Oh, another pawn? Okay. If you insist. Alright, so now we play knight g4. Or knight f3. Um, this in some sense blocks my queen from this square, but h3 covers that square, so I'm fine. Um, so then we just develop the pieces one by one. Um, 
Yeah, let's get the rook out of the corner. I want to be tricky with all that other jazz, but development takes priority. So we're up two pawns. Skies are blue. Sun is yellow. The clouds are white. The grass is green. Um, the various yeah. things are various other colors. So knight g6 um, delays uh, made on f8. It probably prevents it outright, but um, yeah, so I don't have any made on f8. How am I supposed to play chess if there's no mate on f8? Okay, so I have to go back. My queen is too exposed there. I need to put the rook in front. A queen and a knight are particularly tricky in combination. Um... Oh, I've actually found an outpost for my bishop now. Imagine that. Uh, so I have to play rook f2. Um, he gets queen g3 in. If this pawn were on g6, I'd have bishop f4 just trapping a queen. Here it doesn't trap a queen. Actually, none of that would have worked, so never mind. Um, check. check, check. Check. Not sure what he was going for by allowing this. Um, Whatever it was, doesn't look compelling. So this is the point where I get to push all the pawns. If you ever wondered what a seven pawns attack looked like, uh, wonder no longer. We're going to find out. So I'm trying to keep this on a dark square. Um, and failing in such endeavor, but, you know, we endeavor anyway. Oh, wow! Okay, well that simplifies my task. Check. So, let's take as many passed pawns as we can get while making sure there's still a square for my king to invade. Check. Okay, my opponent's drunk. My opponent is so drunk. Victory. All right. Well, apparently after like seven losses in a row, um, I've started to win a few. I've been saying I need a break. I'm saying I need to watch Zug's games, but man, I'm on a roll. Same time Ready. pairing. Okay, I get a tougher pairing this round. Pairing algorithm gave me like multiple easy pairings in a row, so. It was hard not to ride that wave. Um, okay, so we go back.
Hmm. Complicated stuff. Is there not a tactic here? This feels like a very tactic prone position. Like bishop takes, bishop takes, bishop c2, bishop c7, bishop takes, bishop takes, rook takes, rook takes. That doesn't seem to work out. Um, I don't like this bishop though. So... I guess here we go into muddy waters that really aren't that muddy, but I want to believe they are. Um, so basically all the rooks get exchanged this way. Or all the bishops do. Um, and I control e7, but he doubles his rooks. Um, so I have to lift the rook some other way, but he plays a4 or a3. Oh, really? That doesn't look compelling. That looks compelling. That I should be afraid of. Or at least concerned about. Um, okay, so I take all the fun out of the position this way. We exchange. And now I'm hitting this pawn. He plays rook 1e3. Um, but it's already clear that, I, oh. I was going to say, it's very clear that I've dealt some damage, so um, I think my position's marginally better. But yeah, neither of us has to worry about falling asleep in this position, which I think was a critical concern prior to some uh, stuff happening there. Yeah, yeah, no, I think you're right that... Um, with all the minor pieces liquidated and queeds off the board. Um, we had one of the most drawish rook endgames ever. And my opponent took some chances and I think overextended himself slightly. But he'll probably beat me because he's higher rated. I'll probably blunder something stupid and get mated. Um, but you never know. Um, I'm going to take a chance with this. All right. This is dangerous stuff. Um, this is less dangerous than it was a minute ago. Check. At least for me it is. Oh wow, did this just win a rook? King d5, yeah. Check. Well, I just won a rook, guys. Victory. Nice. My opponent overextended. Because I was playing too boring.
Ready. Throw away underscore one. Should I be afraid of this guy? Survey says yes. Uh, okay. We get this opening. Oh, I guess I did crack top 150. Um, Zug is not. What? He's 115? Uh, I've been playing this forever. He just. Okay, fine. He's good. He's good. <laughs> He's better than I am. That's amazing. How did he do that? Did he go like berserk every game or what? That's incredible. Ay, ay, ay. Well, so I still have a chance to ruin Zug's marathon. Uh, uh, okay, we're going to stop the dumb mates. I'm still curious, though, how he managed... Um, in such a span of time to collect that many points. But I guess I shouldn't have been so surprised. He's really good. Oh, plus I had that huge losing streak. Um, oh, I hung a pawn. I hope he doesn't take at. Um, he's probably just going to take my knight. Alright, so my pawn is no longer hanging. I'm not even sure that whether I had something in response to him taking that or not. But I bluffed him out of taking it. Instead, I got this exchange that simplifies the position and brings us one step closer to an endgame where um, I'm likely to outplay players of similar strength in endgames because I've read large parts of the encyclopedia of chess endgames and most players have not done that. So... I'm expected to um, mess up people's endgames. And I've read several books on the subject as well, and it's just fun stuff. I just find it interesting what you can achieve with so few pieces still on the board. I should have taken this. Let's remedy that. There we go. It's funny, they say like uh, strong players, uh, strong players trade the correct pieces. If you look at my own games, I'm pretty afraid about trading anything. Unless I'm clearly advantageous. Um, I guess that's a part of my game I can work on. is understanding what peace trades are good and bad instead of just in general avoiding trades. You're saying he's got queen takes f2. I'm not seeing it. Uh and the other thing is, like, people would accuse you of helping me cheat or something if I were to solicit advice, so... Unfortunately, that puts kind of a damper on the whole banter thing. So...
So how's Victory. he gonna? Oh, okay. Throw away one throws away the game. Ready. Get pared down again. I'll take that. Uh, let's play Budapest. Free pawn. Super free pawn. Okay. Alright, he wants it back. He can almost get it back, but not quite. Um, so yeah, just develop and stuff happens. I don't see any alternative to this course of development. Oh, my opponent left the... no, he didn't. Just kidding. I was gonna say I'm hanging on there for a few seconds in case he comes back. Because I'm not sure why he would have left in the first place. Check. But that would have been really opportunistic. In fact, the tournament encouraged me encourages me to smash the button, just saying, you know, I won. Um, that would have been quite the hook, especially because I'm a Lee Chess developer. So you got to feel a little bit bad about that. If you don't, then I don't know. you got to click faster. No, I... Oh, okay. Um, let's analyze that. Was that just that he wasn't having any fun, or was I just better here? Okay. Well, um... Um... Okay, back to Marathon. Ready. I guess he just really wants to see me play against Zug. That's the only way I can logically explain that. Derp derp. Okay, well, that wasn't getting very far now, was it? Um. Derp derp derp. I'm just gonna play this derpy like. Uh, there's a word for this, like a caveman attack. You just like throw the whole kitchen sink at the king's side, and you're like, ah, something will work. Don't worry about it, it's all sound. <laughs> oh, oh no. Um, can you be a Lee Chess developer? I don't know. Maybe. I guess you're asking, what does it take to become one? Um, and. Um, I guess the answer is you have to, like, really know what you're doing, like, be really good at what you do, and um, be willing to commit to um, do a lot of work for very little in exchange. Nothing monetarily in exchange, and very little in terms of people being grateful for what you did either. <laughs> Just have to enjoy it for the sake of doing it. But yeah, if you're really good at what you do and um, I guess really enjoy chess, then maybe that might be something worth considering. Alright, so this position's falling apart. And by this position I mean mine. Oh! He's not snatching my pawn. Okay, well, I guess I'll castle. I have yet to figure out which direction. Um, okay, it looks like queenside. Queenside it is. Yeah, and get used to people expecting you to support them. Like it's uh, customer support. Um, and they'll report things that they think are bugs. And then when you explain to them that no, that's not the decision that was made, then they'll just complain to you that they disagree with the decision. And the forum is a great place to converse and have constructive discussion. 
Um, but yeah, be prepared to argue with people because they won't like what you did, no matter what you do. Check. Oh no, that that's why I like pointed out in advance is because like some people do work and expect to have people be grateful for it. And just saying, don't go in there with that kind of, um, I want to say, superior or American sort of mentality that, oh, I'm so good that people should be grateful for what I do. Uh, that just never works. All right, so we're down a rook. Yeah. You lose. Let's get on with the next game. Forget that one happened. Ready. All right, we got a Sicilian on our hands. Can we get Knight of Six? Yes, we get the one line I. Oh, never mind. We don't get that line. Just kidding. Um, yeah, no, I have no idea what's going on here. I think I'm supposed to. No, that loses a knight. Let's do this. That looks fun. And that. And then castle? Maybe? I don't know. If e5, knight f5, maybe. Um, sure. This looks okay. Uh, yeah, why not? Um... Okay, and then if a5, a4, and all right, let's give up the bishop pair. Let's give up both bishop pairs. <laughs> all right, so I might have something maybe because knights are tricky. Um, Um, I guess I could do queen a6, going after this. Oh, he's got queen c7 here. I just saw that anything else I tried wasn't working, so I decided to like look behind door number three. Turns out this isn't working either. Uh, well, no, a4 doesn't do anything. Um, take that. Sack and exchange. Um, let's just go back. Oh, that loses the pawn. Turns out that I might not know the Sicilian. Um... Just saying. All right, so let's try to coop his, keep his pieces cooped up to the extent we can. Wait, I've got knight e5 here, don't I? No, I don't. Knight e5, queen e5, knight f6, bishop f6, rook takes, queen takes. Um, nope, that doesn't quite cut it either. Oh, this is unfortunate now, isn't it? My knight has nowhere to go on the king's side, so it's going to look for pastures elsewhere. Uh, knight e5 is legal here. Okay. Which takes? Which piece takes that? 
Yeah, it looks fine. Check. Nothing to worry about. Everything's under control. Um, no, but seriously, this kind of looks messy. Sort of. Check. Not sure what you're referring to, uh, Bakus. Um, maybe you're asking like why I'm not winning it. Um, that's because there are like five thousand other players in the event. That's why I'm not winning. But I'm definitely playing in it. Uh, okay. But no, I think I should take a break and watch Zug play. But at this point, there's actually some chance that we might get paired. So. Kind of got to go for that possibility. Wait. As long as I'm defending this knight. Oh no. Yeah, no, I'm fine. He can't do Check. queen takes. Oh, he had bishop takes e4 this whole time. Alright. Yeah, we'll concede Jeez. that. Oh, and actually he didn't. He didn't have bishop takes e4 until I made that last queen move. Ready. Whatever. Um... Budapest! Here we go. It's a popular opening. No, it's it's pretty fun. It gets people out of book. This is what it does. Um, and usually gets some decent-ish position. I kind of like the way this opponent's played it. I've misplayed something here. Oh, did I say I wanted to win this event? Uh, I mean, I wanted a trophy, but I don't care if I win the event. I just want a trophy saying, hey, you did kind of okay, maybe. Um... Yeah, Lee Chess doesn't give that kind of participation uh, medal. Uh, so. Eh, let's play this. Oh, is this a real opening? Like, I'm pretty sure once E4 happened on the board, we left Book. So it was like move three or something. No, that was four. Um, so where do I go? Oh, hey, look, I got knight d4 here. That looks fun. Yeah, they do give um, trophies to the top hundred. Which, if I stuck around and played another six hours, um, I'd have a chance at it. I would very likely not... I don't know. It gets exhausting after a while. Like, for a while it, it's a novel sort of activity, but... Um, yeah, it's just brutal. Like, once you get into hour 22 and 23 of the tournament, you're like, why am I playing this? This is not fun anymore. And so I don't think I'm going to go that far with it. Um... Prior to that, things are pretty fun, but 
Yeah, only the people who are like serious about winning the event tend to stick around um, in the top uh, 200 places or so. And they will fight tooth and nail over every single position because that trophy matters to them. And to me, I don't need it as bad as some other people need it. So, I don't like, it, it, it just doesn't, it becomes not fun at some point. There's so many other things I could do um, on this day than try to win a trophy. So we hit this pawn, um, but also step out of the way to move the f-pawn and um, guard the g-pawn, but also allow knight e5. Yeah, Lance, I don't know how Lance finds time for it. It's impressive. He's quite good to do what he does. Um, Sometimes I wonder if he's just collecting all the trophies just to see how many changes Lee Chess has to make to accommodate his um, trophy collection. Uh, okay, well, I guess we'll stop knight f5 because that would have won a pawn, like right in front of my king, which could have been bad. I might end up playing f6 um, if he plays queen d4. I don't, I don't like any of the squares I have at my disposal here. I don't understand though why he's not going for the obvious queen d4. It's pretty decent. There's really not much of a downside to doing it. Other than I expect it to happen, so you don't get the jump on me that way, but it's actually a pretty good move. Uh, so we'll go back. Don't tell them about this one, guys. Although it's pretty obvious, like I'm telegraphing my intent here. It's not just to dodge knight d4. Um, okay. So, we take away these squares. Um, I think I get everything covered. Uh, do I do F takes? I suppose I do. In any other universe, that makes no sense. But here, um, I've got reasons to play it. Well, that's annoying. Because my A pawn hangs, I have to Victory. allow this exchange. Um, but he couldn't decide. Oh. Uh, the reason I didn't take E4 is because I have been playing for 3 hours 45 minutes. Not really. Ready. I think more like 3.5 hours. But um, I just don't see things hanging at this point. Okay, we'll play the advanced variation, uh, which I think goes a3, and then b4, cb, cb, 
Um, yeah, I mean, it's easy to miss under those circumstances, too, but... Um, I don't know, like, when I'm playing over-the-board games, I only tend to show up for those when I actually care about winning. Oh. Wait, have I messed up this move order? Very likely so. So, yeah, you can see I'm playing a French Gambit. Um, should have played Knight F3 and then A3. Or at least on Queen B6 I needed to play Knight F3. Well, whatever. Here we are. Still, this isn't terrible. Um, you can't really play d4 here. Yeah, no, b5 is possibly in the works. Um, but also possible is just putting my knight on b6. Um, well, fuck, he's got that. Uh, so... I guess this is forced. I don't want to play this. Because each piece that gets exchanged makes this just a little bit harder to hold. But, I don't know. I've got my queen active now, so that's maybe a plus. Um... All right, so we don't allow knight f5, so... Oh. Okay. Again, I wouldn't have outright exchange there, but uh, normally, but here it ensures that my center does not instantly collapse, so... You know. Um... But yeah, saying uh, over the board, I only tend to show for those kinds of games when I'm interested in winning. Um, and so I will generally, m most of the time, spot all that BS stuff that like requires a lot of attention and focus. Because um, I'm always looking for that sort of thing in an over the board game. Uh, I will calculate everything out to the very end and just generally do pretty good with that. Uh, it gets exhausting very quickly. And it would probably be more fun to play chess if I understood the game better. Um, this technique where I'm just like shuffling pieces and saying, oh, that kind of sort of looks right, it doesn't quite work. Um, oh, that doesn't work. Um, so, how do I attack stuff? Well, he's got bishop c5 coming in, in a second here, so I need to overprotect this so I can run away. Um... And while I'm not seeking a queen trade, I can still try to stir up some kind of mayhem there. Um, meanwhile, he wants to play d4. He wants to collect my b-pawn, but there's other things going on in this position. Um, let's try to complicate this. I know he was just thinking about, do I trade, do I not trade? And there's no way he's considering these knight moves too. Knights are tricky. So now I've got queen h5 to h8, possibly. You made it to 600th place. Well done. Yeah, I'm hungry. So I think after I lose my next time, it should be pretty soon, I'll get some food. Um, 
Um, okay, so I, wait. Yeah, I have to. No, I can't do this. That's illegal. I must, but it's not legal. So this protects G5. Um, okay. Uh, wow. This is just crumbling. Good fun. Um, all right, so knight d1 is the only move to hold this together. Oh, check that out. Um, again, only move to attempt to salvage this. Right. That was unstoppable. Okay, that's a fork. Pretty nasty one at that. Um, this undermines my G pawn, but I couldn't have stopped it anyway. Uh, now he does rook takes G3. I take one of those. Okay. Check. Well, as long as there's no stalemate, this is fine. Check. Uh, for him. Uh, thanks to stalemate opportunities, um... We get a second chance yeah. to try to attempt to save this. Yeah. Oops, well, there is the game. Yeah. He found it! <laughs> Alright, cool. So, yeah. Um, so, hope that was fun or instructive or something. I'm sure there was something in this game somewhere. This is lost. This is lost. Queen g3 is a... Yeah, let's learn from our mistakes. Knight e3 was played. Um, that doesn't work. Rook b3 is the necessary move. Yeah, like, there's no way I'm finding rook b3. Even that doesn't hold this together. So... where was... okay, next. Um, f6. Oh, free pawn. Free pawn doesn't work. Knight move doesn't work. Pawn takes pawn. Not a good idea. Uh, knight a4. Yeah, knight a4 hitting the bishop. Preparing to, yeah. I don't know the French that well. So it doesn't surprise me that I just got mauled in this game. Like, seriously mauled. Right, we're done learning from mistakes because my computer's overheating. Um, so where are my three blunders? Really, was it only three? Six mistakes, three blunders, four inaccuracies. But I need to see, like... Oh yeah! Yeah, this thing. This is maybe okay until bishop d4. Oh, and the key here was that if I played rook c1... Then I've got shots for, like, if he does uh, rook c1, knight takes, knight takes. I didn't see that. But, you know, if I misplay this opening again, um, I'll probably remember that. Yeah, knight f3 is the key move. Knight f3, the reason I missed this is because I'm hungry, honestly. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you had fun, and let's go watch uh, Zug play some games. Or if he hangs up, then we'll find somebody else, but whatever. Hope it was fun, thanks for watching. See you next time.